it's about family. We both have family. We both, you know, like, and part of the reason we decided we had to designate ourselves as a restaurant even before we had food was it was really important to me and to John that our kids could come and see what we do. And that was David from Triton Brewing Company on this week's episode of Brewers. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Brew Roots, where we tell the stories behind your favorite beer. This is Sound Guy Ryan, and joining me, as always, is Erica and Matt. That's right. We are here live at Small here Pond we Studios. Are. We've had quite a day. We have. The best day. We went to a brewery in Fitchburg, Massachusetts. And that's all. Yeah. If you want to look up breweries in Fitchburg, Massachusetts, you could probably guess where we went. And that's all we're saying. Exactly. You're just going to have to guess. Spoiler yeah. alert. Yeah. But major shout out to our homie in South Africa, uh, Saggy Stem Brewery, who uh, took some time out of their busy day to sit down and, and talk to us. Yeah. Which yeah. just solidifies that we're freaking international. International. Worldwide. We're worldwide. I know. He wanted to do our um, 150th episode beer, collab beer. I mean, sure. It's coming up next week, baby. It is. Oh, baby. Episode 150. Ryan, what should our collaboration beer be? Um, I don't know. Yeah. A beer. A beer. That I'll drink. Yeah. A beer that you'll yeah. drink. Which uh, is pretty much most, but... Speaking of beers that you've drank, what have you been drinking this week? Uh, I mean, I've had a lot of stuff. I've had some stuff from Greater Good. Um, I've had some stuff from Sam Adams. Oh. Um, I picked up some more shilling beer, because why not? And then I picked up some 60 minute. I felt like a, a, the snowstorm deserved a good old 60 minute IPA. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Seriously. All right. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I've been drinking a lot of the homebrew that we made, Ryan, on our claw hammer system. I know. I need to uh, have that growler filled, sir. Yes. It settled out really nicely and uh, it's got a nice fa- a nice taste to it. That's I know. Good. I haven't had it yet either. Um, I'll have to really, bring it next you week. You really need to bring it like a growler yeah, of ours. I'll something. bring it next week. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, I've been drinking Jack Zappy. What else is new? Mm-hmm. Uh, One day he'll like give us a new beer that he's had. Not just a tiny <laughs> lot of Jack Zappy. <laughs> and uh, I had a smutty nose beer that I was I was gifted. Oh, by someone. Hey, that's here, fun. Just take this, and it was good. I I don't recall what it was, but it was good. You know what beer that I had that I forgot about, and I don't know how I could forget about it. Was it a Sylvaticus? It was. It was the Sylvaticus Bruce Tiff ah, Marquis, you had it. or whatever how you pronounce it. Oh, it's so good. It was so good. Highly recommend 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Uh, Erica, what have you been drinking? What have I been drinking? Um, actually, a lot of wine. For whatever reason, we've had yeah, a same. ton of pasta this past week. <laughs> Just how the cards played out. Um, bulking up. So, yep. Yeah, so, <laughs> bulking up and having that sweet, sweet red wine. Nice. Yeah. Um, I also had a couple of night shift beers. Um Always good go-tos. Yeah, yeah. A couple of their IPAs. Um, yeah, that's that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. No, solid, solid stuff. Yeah. Well, we're, we here at Brewery are prepping for Mass Beer Week. Yeah, yeah. just around the corner. I, I heard someone saying, like, oh, well, you know, you know, I can, do, well, it's uh, coming up in March, and, you know, it's so far away, but then it's like, no. No. It's like four it's weeks away, and like we're in the shortest month. Just, <laughs> just around the corner. Oh, oh my yeah. God. Crazy. But there's going to be a lot of um, awesome activities happening with Mass Beer Week. I know that they're doing a ton of cool stuff for uh, yes. all of us yes. in the beer community. You're so. just going to have to stay tuned to find out yeah. what exactly. But um, make sure to follow them on social media. Yes, yeah. Mass Brewers Guild. Facebook, yeah. Mass Brewers Guild. Um, but Mass Beer Week as well, they yes. have their own social media um, tag. So follow that. And we're going to be doing some stuff with it as well. So it stay is. tuned yeah. on our social media when we make some announcements. It's and gonna if, be pretty amazing. If you ordered your beer merch, uh, Mass Beer Week shirts, those Which sh- we did. those shipped, I believe, this week. Nice. So those should be coming in right around the corner. There's also some sweet glasses. Yeah. Um, that they're making. Uh, so. Yeah, I was fortunate enough to get one of the glasses they got last out. year. Oh, those oh, were so cool. Those were so I awesome have one, too. Yeah. yeah. Nice. nice. We, where did we get those, Ryan? We got uh, them together. We, Riverwalk. Yeah, we did. We bought them at Riverwalk together. Yes. Yeah. 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 So I think a couple of breweries will be selling those. Yeah. As well. Uh, so we have an awesome episode for you. We went to uh, uh, Indianapolis. Back to high school. Back to high school. No. <laughs> uh, so we went to uh, you went to Triton Brewing, and you'll learn that that was the high school name that Ryan and I went to, but they have Fun nothing facts. to do with each other. No, unfortunately. But uh, this one's awesome. John and David are a hoot. They are. This yeah. was a really fun episode, honestly. Yeah. Um, 
and just a really great like brewery. Like I feel like if I went there, I would just be like welcomed in as oh, like, part of the family. Yeah, yeah. Um, Which I'm excited for COVID to be over, so we can go. Yeah, to these so we can go and do that. that. Yeah. <laughs> it gave me like a really good like Berkshire Brewing Company vibe. Yeah, you know, talking yeah. to them. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I agree. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, it's kind of people who have been in the industry for a while and they really know what they're doing. They do, yeah. and they kind of funny enough. Um, David, I believe, he had the dream of opening a brewery from, like, day one. Yeah, which we don't ever hear. We never hear that. Like, no one has ever, like, yeah, well, I've always wanted to open a brewery, like, ever since I was a kid. It's like, what? Yeah. That's crazy. But that was his dream. And um, he achieved it. He achieved it. So, uh, really cool story, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Well, I don't really have any other Mass Beer Week news or Mass mass Beer news other than, you know, look up for Yeah, stay tuned. Um, Valentine's Day is coming up. Yes. And please support local for that. A ton of breweries will be um, holding events. uh, Don't forget forget your significant other. So don't forget, or your significant (laughs) self. Yeah. You know, I was Um, about to say, yeah, for me, it'll be significant. Day is a thing, too. Yeah. That's right. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, definitely just check that out. Um, Support local if you can. And. Yeah, that's about all I got too. Yeah, um, yeah. Other than that, and then you had the Pink Boots meeting. Pink Boots meeting. Yep, that went well. Um, that was it was cool. Actually, went went really well virtually. Honestly, um, looking forward to the next one. It was nice just to see everyone's smiling faces again. Yeah, even if it was virtual. Well, we've had a long day. Yes, and we want you guys to get to the interview. We do because it's a killer one. It's an awesome one. So, without further ado, cheers. 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 All right, Erica and Ryan, we are here at Small Pond Studios, the home of the Brew Roots podcast, and we are here with a brewery that shares a name with a special place for Ryan and I. Hell yeah. yeah. Interesting. We, conveniently enough, Ryan and I went to Triton High School, correct, Triton? Ryan? Yes, we did. I mean, at least I, that's where I remember me going. I don't know. Yeah. I, don't, I don't remember much of it, but it, it was a thing. It was 10 years ago for me. Wow. <laughs> 12 years. I don't know how many. I don't let's, know how many anymore. About You're old. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, and I remember a couple of years ago looking up Triton on, on Instagram because I, I was just I was just curious to see what's out there. And I was like, Triton Brewing Company? What the what the hell? This is great. Um, so we've finally gotten you guys on. I think it's been a, a long time coming. I think I talked to you guys probably in like 2018 when I was a lot less serious with the podcast and... Uh, Erica Re- reconnected. Reconnected us <laughs> in 2020 of all years. Because well, why not? <laughs> um, and we're here with uh, David and John of Triton Brewing Company. Uh, and I have to say, they probably have the best beards in the <laughs> brewing industry. Oh, for sure. Um, well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> right. facial, facial hair. Facial hair. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hair. We've seen we've seen some really. He's great, got some great handlebars. Yeah, right? they're amazing. <laughs> um, so we start My every. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we start every podcast with every guest asking this question. Uh, what is your role at the brewery? Introduce yourself so they know who just, who Dave is and who John is. And uh, what's your first memory of beer? John, do you want to start? Sure. Uh, my name is John Lang. Uh, I'm the head brewer and one of the operating owners here at Triton in Indianapolis. Uh, my first memory of beer Probably going out to Cleveland, Ohio to see my granddad and drinking uh, Genesee Cream Ale. Nice. nice. Back in the 70s. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> uh, my name is David Waldman. Uh, I guess my title is Director of Forking Awesomeness. But um, <laughs> legitimately, that's like operations and anything else that people don't want to do is kind of my job. Uh, also, operating owner, um uh it would have to be my dad is not a connoisseur of 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 beer never has been but my earliest recollection is probably a pbr so uh Ooh. yeah nice yeah. it's rough <laughs> but you know there's I no shame in a pbr it, so. yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. not bad really cold so, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's one of our go-tos <laughs> if we're like in a shady place. Listen, it won a, it won a blue ribbon at one point. So. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> so much so they put it in the name. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's talk about uh, life before Triton. What did you guys do? Um, what was it like? Did you guys grow up saying you wanted to be in the beer industry? I mean, was the PBR and the Genesee Cream Ale kind of like a formative <laughs> moment for you where you said, this is what I want to do, but... Or what was the original plan? 
for me, I, uh, I found my love in craft beer in, in between my junior and senior year, uh, took three months over in Germany. Uh, from there I went into school and, and became a, uh, hydraulic engineer in Minnesota. Uh, my wife moved us here to Indianapolis where I had an opportunity to start cleaning kegs and tanks at a, another small brewery, uh, here in, uh, in town, uh, nine years ago, 10 years ago. Now, I guess it would be, we, I decided to quit that and try to get something myself going. So realistically, I fell into the industry of brewing just by my wife moving us here. Nice. Were you uh, home brewing at all during that time period or just cleaning oh, kegs? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I started home brewing in 1990. Oh, nice. Uh, and I think I started uh, professional brewery in 2001. Wow. Oh, good for you. You've been brewing for 29, 30 years. That is a nice. lot of brewing. Nice. <laughs> Not no, to date you no, at yeah. all, but that's that's a lot. That's pretty amazing. There's a lot of changes that have happened in uh, oh, home yeah. brewing and brewing in general during that time period. Yeah, the supply lines have all changed, and there's been a lot of things to change. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I always say that one of our competitive advantages – uh, not to give my elevator speech, but, um, you know, there's a lot of breweries in the industry today. And, and one of our advantages is we're a company that's 10 years old, according to the state, we've been actually commercially making beer for over nine years now. And we've got, well, commercial packaging and brewing experience about 26 years, uh, in our brew, in our brewery. So, that uh, gives a the quality of the product. It, it really speaks for itself. But uh, but part of the reason that it does is because John's been doing it and doing it well for long enough that in a lot of ways that the beer is him. It's his personality. It's balanced and for it's sure. it's good. It's real good. I'm I'm a fan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. <laughs> I'm a little biased, but I'm also a fan. Yeah. So. yeah. Uh, Dave, I like beer so much, I helped start the company. So, you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, David, talk about life before Triton for you. What was the original plan for you? Uh, so I can remember going to see my guidance counselor in high school. Um, my parents had friends that opened the f first craft brewery in, in northern Indiana, where I grew up uh, in the mid-80s when I was in my formative teen years. And uh, Dr. Schmidt, who was a, a former pharmaceutical uh, uh, developer. He worked for a big laboratory company that made Alka-Seltzer and other stuff, got tired of the rat race, and basically in what was formerly a Chuck E. Cheese opened up the Mishawaka Brewing Company. And we were in there, and I was drinking craft sodas, and my parent, my mom was drinking craft beer. My, my Again, my dad, you know, even in a brewery, it's, if it's not uh, old Latrobe 33, he's not really interested in it. So, um, <laughs> but... Uh, I decided right then and there after seeing the equipment and talking to the, the guy that that's what I wanted to do. So I, when I went and saw my guidance counselor in high school, I said I wanted to own a brewery. And he was like, oh, really? Because maybe you need to see an addictions counselor instead of a <laughs> you know, guidance counselor. And in those days, there was no, there really were very few programs. I, th you, I think UC Davis was the big one. They've been around, I think, the longest uh, there weren't a lot, of, a lot of other opportunities, so I decided I needed to kind of go on an academic trail where uh, I had the ability to learn what I needed to learn to eventually get here. Uh, and uh, it took until my 40th-ish birthday to open the brewery, uh, but I never thought it wouldn't happen. So, uh, so we got here. As soon as John and I kind of connected, and we'd met each other a couple of times previously, but when I heard through the grapevine that he was looking for an opportunity to, you know, to, to be his own boss, I was just like, holy shit, this guy, sorry. <laughs> we get an explicit guy, rating. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> they got a, This guy should have the franchise tag on him from this other brewery. Like the, he had three great American beer festival medals in a time where they weren't plentiful like they are today. Right. <laughs> like, nice. And he had them in three different categories, which were quite diverse. So it was like, I mean, not diverse. One was American brown ales, right? Like that's not that. But compared to like Still. barrel aged beer and coffee infused beer, like he had like legit skills. And how could a brewery let him go that he won the only medals that they possessed, right? Right. So like, wait, this guy's potentially on the market. So as soon as we kind of got together, 
it was a year and a half and we were off to the races. So, and living the dream. That's well, cool. you know, until the pandemic. But. Right. <laughs> That's really cool. Though. Honestly, we haven't had too many stories where someone was in high school and was like, yeah, I'm going to open up a brewery one day. Yeah, that's really that's, cool, Dave. That's super cool. So uh, the oldest brew pub in the state, uh, which is Broad Ripple uh, Brewing Company, and or, and we, I, I mean, we definitely have to tip our hat to them because we wouldn't, there wouldn't be a Triton, there wouldn't be, there wouldn't be any, any Indianapolis brewery worth a damn uh, if it wasn't for the Broad Ripple uh, Brewing Company. John Hill, the guy that uh, started that company 30 years plus ago. Um, changed the law so that we could do what we do. Like, oh, wow. and when he changed the law, then that gave Mishawaka Brewing Company and Oak and Barrel and a couple of other small operators with vision uh, the opportunity to, you know, to do what they do and really to inspire us to be who we are today. So, and in fact, I have to be honest, a lot of our business plan was written uh, in the dark pub at uh, the Broad Ripple Brewing Company <laughs> <laughs> late at night drinking their British style IPA. So, uh, I mean, we got a lot of love for those guys, and, and we definitely don't forget where we came from. But, you know, it was those guys who's really, in a lot of ways, are the shoulders that we stand on. Because we, in some ways, grew up in their breweries. They inspired us to go do our own thing in, in the industry and, and, and on, on a certain level gave us a very basic roadmap on how to get there. So, hmm. um, yeah, yeah, a lot of, lot of respect. Yeah. Cheers to those guys, for sure. So, yeah. Definitely. Uh, John, being in the industry since 2001, uh, branching off to start your own brewery in 2010, it sounds like. Uh, how many people looked at you and said, you're 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 crazy to start your own brewery in 2010? Uh, <laughs> I think there were, there were still bombers going around. Uh, the 16-ounce cans didn't in, exist. Uh, <laughs> a hazy IPA was a, was a, a nightmare that you would have. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Still is. A yeah, yeah. Bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, there was no cereal. There was no cereal milkshake IPAs. <laughs> so what, what? What a time! Yeah, I mean, uh, what, what? It was all traditional styles all the time. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, the, the, quick story on the hazy. I, I've worked all these years on making a clear beer, and and now they want me to make the hazy beer, yeah. and, and I struggle to do it. I we we do our damnedest all the little tricks and everything we've heard, but then this stupid beer turns clear. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, back, back in, tw in 2010, uh, no, we, I had a lot of support from, from the community and from, uh, other people, uh, brewing community and the community. Uh, we were, we were set up to do a, uh, a production brewery, which we'd have been the third one at the time here in, in Indianapolis. Um, and I did a lot, we had a lot of support for it. So, you know, as years go by, you see that, that people are really struggling to get things started. You know, production breweries aren't the thing, aren't the thing to do anymore. You see a lot of um, breweries today opening up and they are, you know, your, uh, you know, five barrel systems, your 10 barrel systems. Um, that's obviously not the business model that you guys went with. Um, right. If you had started a brewery in 2020, well, aside of the pandemic, <laughs> would you go in the same? Would you have gone in the same direction that you went in 2010? Hell no. Um, to give you an idea, we, we've got a 20 barrel system. Uh, we were able to double batch, no problem. Uh, the uh, when we first when we did our business plan at the get go, we we underestimated the front of house, and we at one point we weren't even talking about anything about a tap room until the very end of the. Uh, uh, building out wow. and, and now now we, we want to push that wall back we want to have more room on the front of the house we added the kitchen two years ago which we never thought we'd ever do wow um three years ago three years ago <laughs> three years ago this month oh geez <laughs> it's all right it's easy uh, to forget the year 2020 so it's easy to say <laughs> that that layer did not exist i, I, do, uh, yeah, I yeah. do for sure yeah right. <laughs> well, years fly by but yeah right now i'd, I'd recommend you know a corner pub uh you know make make yourself a little community pub that, that specializes in good local beer yeah yeah there's no way yeah. I'd, I'd do a production brewery yeah you no know, we thought we we're going to be a re we we're going to have regional distribution we were the 37th brewery to open in the state of indiana when well when the pandemic hit there were about 182 breweries in the wow. state of indiana yeah. so and that that explosion really happened in about the last six years when right. 
when we first opened, we were one of 10 breweries in, uh, it's like a 30 mile radius, I think. And now there's 40. Wow. Jeez. So it's just like, wow, you know, and, uh, and then on top of that, uh, the local giant distributor for the last four ish years was bringing in 30 to 40 out of state brands, uh, a year, which also, um, uh, made things a lot more challenging. So there just wasn't, yeah, everything's changed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, talk about the, the form factor of your, your, you guys are doing a little bit different of bottles that we saw online. So you have growlers and you have cans, but then you also are doing like a plastic growler. It looked like the bullet. Yep. Yep. Now what, what's that about? That's because it's so much easier to travel with or. You can take it to places where you can't take glass is a big thing. Uh, we have the state park, um, Fort Benjamin Harrison state park is almost Frisbee throwing distance from our oh, building. <laughs> um, so, and they don't allow glass in there, but they do allow oh, beer. Okay. And, and the really nice thing about those half growlers is they fit right in your drink holder on your bicycle. So oh, like, it's perfect. You know, <laughs> but, but the truth is like India, that's a big thing in Indianapolis. I thought it was everywhere there. It's actually a PET. It's not plastic. It's a polyethylene triphosphate or something. So, um, which, you know, you would never would occur in nature, but does a fairly good job of protecting the beer is an overly porous, uh, is, uh, ultraviolet can't penetrate it, which is real nice. Cause it's actually a Brown bottle. So, and it's, it's just not translucent. So you can't see through it. Um, it's, and for the big beers, you know, it's, it's easy to sell a half growler of something for $13 if it's, you know, 12% ABV right. uh, barley wine or something. <laughs> and we feel a lot better about that than so- selling someone half a gallon of a beer that's that big. And, you know, it becomes right. Joe versus the volcano and you get a call from somebody's spouse saying, why is he urinating in the laundry basket? You know? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> oh anyway. Oh, my gosh, that's funny. Plus, then you can be like, oh, if you want a growler of that, it's $27, and that's a lot harder sell than saying, hey, you can get a half growler of that to take home for thirteen fifty right. or whatever. So, Absolutely. But, yeah, there's also some, like, you know, higher-level thinking that goes behind that, too. So, yeah. <laughs> And we've had those phone calls. In nine years, we have had those phone calls. I'm just saying. You should record those. Yeah. <laughs> that should be part of the uh, the, the rebranding. Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> right? We used to do our, our main flagship brand, our IPA, is the Rail Splitter, and we've got a really great pail that's the Pail Splitter. But a couple of years, we did what we called the Head Splitter, which was, like, Jeez. usually between between 9 and 12% um, Imperial IPA. Yeah. And we'd have got, you know, the guys that come in and get the regular six barrel and they take it home and suddenly they're drinking a 12% beer uh, in a pint glass at oh, their house. They and don't realize things, it. Yeah, right. <laughs> things get out of hand fairly quickly. Yeah, so, yeah. And then the wife's calling, David, what good? I'm like, hey, he bought the keg. You know, like, yeah. the law Sat right on he's there. responsible. So. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, before we get into what the craft beer scene is like in Indianapolis, we just want to give a quick shout out to our amazing sponsors out there in Sponsorland. So, take it away. Did you know that your favorite Massachusetts breweries use hops from a local family owned hop farm right here in Massachusetts? Our friends over at Four Star Farms are there for you whether you're a commercial brewery or a small batch home brewer. Make sure to head over to their website today and get your hands on some of the best and freshest hops available locally. Cheers! Cheers. At our local homebrew shop, Beer and Wine Hobby, you can get everything you need to make beer, wine, cider, cheese, and more. Not sure where to start? They have knowledgeable staff there to help. Beer and Wine Hobby is family owned and located in Danvers, Massachusetts. Visit their website, beer-wine.com, and use our promo code BRUITS for 10% off your online order today. Shirks on Tap is the box subscription service where you can get some of the dopest brewery t-shirts out there. I'm talking breweries from Dallas, San Diego, and even our home area of New England. And you might ask, how do I get my hands on some? To get your first box for $5, click the link below in our description, or head on over to our website, breweries.com. Remember, drink better beer, 
wear better shirts. All right, so I'm curious. Uh, when I think of Indianapolis, I don't think of the first thing that comes to mind is not beer. It's like always, car racing. Uh, car racing, right? Obviously. That's usually what I get. Uh, I'm sure that's <laughs> I'm sure that's what you hear. Um, and I, I also think in, in my in my internal monologue, I think uh, it's a very blue collar area. So, you know, convincing people to drink craft beer, was that ever a struggle for you? Um, do you have to offer a, a lighter offering to people that come in and say, you know, I like the I like Miller, I like Coors, I like, you know, the domestic beers? Um, or is that something you just encourage people to, you know, hey, try this. This is awesome. I think, you know, when I first started 20 years ago, yeah, you, you had to have something like you had to have a variety of on, on the lighter side. I mean, we didn't have an IPA until 2007, oh, which geez. was behind it. I mean, it was, it was crazy. But now people are a lot more open for sure. Um, with the kitchen, we, in my opinion, we have to have wine or, or something that's not gluten-free, I guess. Um, but people are pretty open to it. Uh, sours are starting to come up here now too. So that's, that's exciting for sure. Yeah. What would you say the craft beer scene is like in, in India right now for you guys? Oof. I think it's bleak. Uh, <laughs> I, I hate to use a word like that, but uh, uh, I, I, the pandemic is definitely going to, I mean, we just saw today some of our friends in the northern end of the state, I mean, legitimately like people we know and that we love, Three Floyds, and I don't know if you guys, I'm, I'm sure you've heard of them. They do uh, zombie dust. They do sounds uh, really familiar. Fle yeah. Dark yeah. Lord Day. Every time we're we're outside of Indiana and people are like, oh, you're from Indiana. You know, do you guys can you get three Floyds? Like, <laughs> yeah, dude. We, we know yeah. Nick personally. Like, they carry our package or did carry their our package in their uh, in their pub. They just shut down the pub and and they're one of the older breweries in the oh, state and furloughed yeah, all their workers at in the brewery in the brew pub and in uh their new distillery and it's like holy crap Awful. like if those guys are on the ropes like it's not good for anybody it's no. just not good for anybody and, and we've seen pretty much a constant uh um running tab if you will of not only local restaurants but local breweries that are like yeah we can't do this anymore and uh you know i think uh John and I decided at the beginning, uh, well, when we started this uh, 10 years ago, that we were willing to fight and die for this place. And we're a couple of old war horses. So, um, you know, we, we won't go down without a fight. But there's, And we've been at it long enough to, to, to you know, to be able to weather something this long, longer than a lot of people. Yeah. Mentally tough, as well as just, he's been brewing for 20 years. You know what I'm saying? Like, your beer was, kind of speaks for itself. He was brewing yeah. in 2008 when the market tanked then, you know? So like, <laughs> this is not, this is not, uh, it, it, I mean, it's probably worse than, uh, than then, yeah. but, um, and it'll definitely, the, only the strong will survive. And, and those of us that do survive, you know, we may get knocked out in three months when the second wave hits or whatever the hell the next thing is that's coming, but <laughs> right. God damn it. If we're going to give up after, you know, basically making this the life's goal. So, um yeah is there anything um specific that you're doing to kind of help you stay afloat right now everything we can yeah yep. <laughs> we, we opened up the back doors and, and did a grocery out the back door for oh awesome. you know, when the, during the shutdown because yeah. we were able to get food and the groceries were having we're struggling to get food it's you know, through a different supply line so yeah yep. so we were ordering it through our restaurant supplies so I was ordering through the kitchen, and then in addition to that, John and I would sit down and be like, "Okay, how many loaves of sourdough did we sell this week? How many, how many dozen eggs do we need to order? How, I mean, we still have, I think, two cases of toilet paper. But <laughs> hey, if you need toilet paper, we got you. All you know right, what I'm all saying? right. So, <laughs> we know where we're going. We, we could get like cleaner with bleach that lots of people couldn't get, and then they were like just happy to have it. And there's like a one to three percent margin on groceries. Like we can't. We can't yeah, fuck that stuff up, yeah. right? We just can't do it because then people can't afford it and it de defeats the whole purpose. Right. But it had people coming in. It had people buying hot meals to take home at the same time. People buying, we were doing case discounts. Like basically everything that we could think of, we, you know, we laid, we we furloughed our sales director. John and I didn't get paid for four or five months Oof, uh, working 100, 
80 to 100 hours a week. Uh, I still work those hours, but in the kitchen. And I mean, it's just like you do what you have to do. You know, it's like right. it's not a lot. You can't just be like, okay, we're done. Yeah. No, we're not. Yeah, you we can't lay down. We didn't work as fucking hard as we have to get here to be like lay down and die. Like, right. and if I lay down and die, then I'm gonna really lay down and die. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? Like, I'm not just gonna give up. Like, I can get up more times than I can be knocked down, and yeah. so can Triton because of that. And that's just like, and John's the same way. Like, plus he's probably already had it. So there's that. Yeah. <laughs> that's all <laughs> pretty huge for the community, though. I mean, I'm sure the community really appreciates all of that hard work. So. Yeah. That just builds your brand. And there's not going to be anybody here when this is all done. So if we can make it to the other side, you know, like hopefully it's an investment in our future exactly. or, or at least the company's future. Yeah. So um, let's talk about the name Triton. Uh, where did you guys come up with that name? Um, why did you choose that name? Go ahead, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> so one of my other jobs is head docent. When the, when uh, there's not a pandemic going on, we do regular <laughs> tours and, uh, and I tell this story frequently. So perfect. So originally, uh, and with the rebranding, it's changed a little bit because actually the Triton and the Trident, um, there's a history of that symbol in the U.S. Army and uh, military as well. So the brood on base thing uh, that we are now changing over to, uh, it still resonates with that. But when we started, and again, we, we, I guess we've outlasted our branding, right? This is kind of like part of the problem with living to be a company that's 10 years old is you got to change some shit, you know? Right, so right. Anyway, <laughs> even if it's related to like who you are and your image. So um, beer is ni about 96% on average, 96% um, water. And when we opened, there weren't a lot of people that were tempering their water. There weren't a lot of people that uh, were using... Well, in particular, uh, reverse osmosis water purification to to basically strip the water down to dihydrogen monoxide, yeah. right? Like right. H2O, and then adding back in the appropriate nutrients so that you have this, this water that's uniquely yours and it doesn't have anything in it that you don't want in it. And and here's a big thing, like it impacts the flavor in, in, a, in a very significant way. I mean, anytime you have, you know, 96% of your product is based on one raw ingredient uh you want that ingredient first off to be similar every time you use it that's really key because then it makes consistency of the product that more important or or that more easy to attain um but it also uh just the basic character of the, of the product so here's an example the only real recipe that existed uh for triton before john developed our palette of beers was the root beer. He used to make, and we've had root beer on tap. It was the first product we tapped in our tasting room in 2011. Cool. Nice. It doesn't get fermented right, so we didn't have to wait for it to ferment. We could put it on right away. Yep. It's done with forced carbonation. So John used to make that recipe at home for his kids, and he used to make it with tap water from the local tap, right, from the sink. Yep. When he made it with the RO water, we ended up having to dial back about 30% of the sugar. Oh, because he found that he was using that 30% of the sugar to cover up the flavor that came with the tap water. Right. Uh, okay. So, so w when we were Triton, it was, is a lesser deity of water. In fact, he's one of five deities. That's the same in Greek and Roman mythology. He was the benevolent, one of the benevolent sea gods. He was the messenger of the sea. He was the calmer of the sea. And, and one of his titles was bringer of good water. So when we started to think, you know, who are we, well, we're going to do all this effort to make sure we have the perfect Triton water to begin with. And that's where kind of it all came from. So, you know, we're, we're going to be the bringer of good water and, and better water equals better beer from our perspective. So um, that, that's kind of where Triton came from. The cool thing about that is that it's when our water uh, is Lawrence Utility Water. We live in a, a neighborhood or a, our, our, our business is in a neighborhood it's a little small city on the outside of Indianapolis called Lawrence. And Lawrence water is all 100% groundwater. So when we talk about like who we are, we're making a product that couldn't be more Lawrence, right? Like 96% mm. of our product comes out of, literally comes out of the ground here. So, and when we do our tours, we always are, are sure to tell people that, you know, what you dump on the ground in Lawrence could conceivably end up in your beer. Now it's not going to, right? 
because the RO system is going to strip that water down to 99.99% pure. But still. And that includes <laughs> taking out yeah, the motor oil or the dog urine or whatever it is that may have seeped down there. <laughs> but but it also takes out all the chemical. It takes out everything except you know heavy metal, that po- theoretical 0.01% of something that's in there uh, is probably heavy metals um, if it's in there. Um, and then, but it's also really too clean for brewing because it doesn't have any of the minerality that the yeast really requires to be happy and healthy and, and right. do all the things we need it to do. So, um, you know, there, there is a little bit of, all right, do we have enough iron? Do we have enough calcium? Do we have enough, um, electrolytes so that our, our, our yeast is happy and healthy and our beer is happy and healthy. So, mm. Yeah. Sorry, that was a little long-winded. No, no. <laughs> no, that was great. Very informative. <laughs> so I guess I know the answer to this next question, but what's the most important part of, of your beer? What's the most important ingredient? <laughs> the people. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there you go. The people. Yeah. I love it. The people. That's cool. That's very That's cool. the most important ingredient in our whole company. Our front of the staff, front of the house staff, they're our face, right? They don't see me. I'm in the kitchen. They don't see John. He's in the brewery. They don't see our sales director because if he's here, he's not selling beer. So get the fuck out and sell some beer, dude. <laughs> you know, like, but but everybody here is here because they're trite and strong. I mean, like they're, and most everybody's here a long time. Our, our office managers with us for more than six years. Our our lead brewers with us more than six years. Uh, uh, until recently, until the pandemic, uh, the average amount of time that our servers, the front of the house servers, are with us three years. Three years in the restaurant industry? That's a long like, time. Yeah, you know, that's, <laughs> that's unconceivable. Like, even in the kitchen, like, I've got everybody in the kitchen with has been with us for more than a year. Like, of course, there's a revolving door for the other position. So, I, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but most people come and stay. And it's because, like, we, they are us. Like, they are, they become our team and our family. Like, we, it, we can't do it without them. People are, I, they've got to be our most important Next is John, but he also is part of that. <laughs> <people> thing, <so. laughs> the guy that makes the beer, yo. Yeah. He's, he's the most like important, really important part. <laughs> I, I, I want to know about the meeting between you guys the first time you met. And and, hmm. and Dave, did you know about Ooh. John just because of his, his, did you follow his career? Or like, what was so f- I was a big beer fan my whole life, right? Like I was going to, like, I can tell you where the brewery is that I learned, like that Mishawaka Brewing Company. They've been gone 10 years. I can tell you who's brewing on that brewery right now and where it is because yes, I follow. I and That's in awesome. my basement, <laughs> I hate to say it, but you know, my whole life leading up to opening a brewery, I I have probably thirty milk crates worth of like six packs from oh, a geez. thousand different beer companies <laughs> from a thousand different brands. I've got like, yeah, like I totally and I met John the first time, uh, and he probably doesn't even remember this, but he uh, yep. he and a very <laughs> very close friend of mine did a pro-am beer for the Great American Beer Festival. It was called The Sinister Minister. And our friend, uh, his name's Greg Christmas. And eventually, he was going to be original partner in Triton, but he went to work for Sam Calagione at Dogfish Head instead. So it's like, <laughs> wow. That's tough. The big leagues, yo. <laughs> so, but they did a, the Sinister Minister, and they held a little reception up at the brewery where John worked and where they brewed this beer. And that's when we met the first time. And John was talking about, we met only briefly. And during the conversation, he talked about, yeah, since I've been here, I rearranged the entire brewery and I took apart each piece of equipment and I moved it and I put it back together and I cleaned it. And and I was like, wait, you did the electrical and the plumbing and like you moved all and you moved it with that three wheeled what over there? Like, like I could like, it was inconceivable to me, like that this guy had these skills, right? Like, I was like, you, you meet a guy like that, you build a company around it. I mean, that's just all there is to it. Like, so, um, and we met, I, we bumped into each other a couple of times over the course of like beer festivals and that sort of thing. And John's always been kind of a staple uh, in the community. And I was doing other things, basically trying to accrue the skills I needed. I felt like I needed so that when I finally struck out on my own, I wasn't spending my money, right? Like <laughs> right. make your mistakes on someone else's dime. <laughs> exactly. Right? So, um, but then, uh, I was sitting down at the broad ripple brew pub with a mutual friend of ours, uh, a fraternity brother of mine who was also a brewer and just had gotten his MBA from the university of Chicago. And I was like, Hey man, you're back in town. Like, let me tell you about my plan. And 
uh, he popped back and said, well, here's my plan. And he had his own thing that was all laid out. And he's like, but I know the perfect guy for you, David. And I was like, yeah, who's that going to be? And he told me John Lang. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about, man? <laughs> How can Barley Island let that guy go? Like, he's their franchise quarterback. You don't let your quarterback go. We know a thing right? or two about that. You yeah. Got- <laughs> yeah. Being right? from Massachusetts, we know yeah. about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's in Brady down to Florida where he does better than Massachusetts does now. It's like, what? You yeah. know, like, <laughs> well, you know, that's the story of John Lang. He's with Triton and he's been the franchise quarterback here for nine years and Hope to God he goes nowhere because well, first off, he's an owner, so he yeah. better not go. Kind of hard to go. <laughs> yeah. But I, like, I was, I was, I was literally shocked when I found out that John was looking for an, an opportunity, uh, and then I kind of heard like, because you know when you look at what someone else is doing from the outside, you're like, oh, here's their championship brewer, and he's a smart guy. He reorganized the entire brewery. Like, there's no way that they're going to let that guy go. And then when you hear the reality of you know like what his experience there was not to say anything negative about Barley Island. Cause we still love those guys who are that guy, you know, at least a little bit. Uh, I mean, <laughs> they gave up John for our success, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But uh, I mean, it's, it's just like, I can't, I can't believe this guy is even available. I yeah. can't believe he's available. And, and when I heard it, it was like, we can't lose now. We can't lose. Yeah. So. It's a beautiful story. I know John gets real uncomfortable when we talk. (laughs) I I guess we have to ask. I mean, (laughs) why does, does someone, I mean, you have, it sounds like you have a family and telling your family, I'm going to leave this, this stable job that I have to, to start a brewery in 2010 and we're going to not make IPAs. (laughs) 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 Uh, Well, well, you know, what, what made you jump ship like that? Uh, the wife, uh, she got tired of me talking about uh, <laughs> trying to do something on my own. And it's like, just go do it already. It's always the wife. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I mean, and without my wife, there's no way in hell I could be doing this. Uh, Amen. One, Amen. one, she carries insurance. You know, she's not a small business owner. <laughs> <laughs> That's helpful. Nice. You know, <laughs> and, you know and, have, and have a, uh, her income is stable. You know, ours is kind of up and down, especially nowadays. Um, uh, but the biggest thing that was holding me back back then was, was who do I, I need a partner. I can do a lot of things mechanically, but for me to deal with some people and, and <laughs> front of house stuff, I just, I no not, not, not for me. So, you know, finding David on that side was, was an, uh, a blessing on uh, from my side. So cool. I joke, I, in a lot of ways, we're kind of like the fire in the ice, which is why I think it works so well. John is cool as a cucumber or yin and yang. If you prefer like more of a, an Eastern philosophy, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. A lot of times, like he has the reins on me, right? He's like, well, man, I think they got the point, right? Like I, <laughs> I'm the fire. Like I, 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 I don't know when to stop. Like when you, you turn really? me loose, it's going to be ugly sometimes. So you, I can rein that in dealing with certain personalities, the, the ones that John, but there's, there's plenty of people that John deals with a lot better than I do because I'm like, you know, like, the vein in my forehead right here starts to pulsate and then things start to become from a blood pressure perspective, not so healthy probably. Yeah. So, right. Right. Yeah. So, and that's why it's worked for 10 years. I mean, he definitely has skills that, I mean, like, uh, you know, and, and, and a work ethic that I'm like, all right, I, I can't give up now. Like would Brewer John give up now? Like, no, no, I can knuckle through this and do this. So, yeah. Uh, before we get into too much of, you know, your future and what's next for you guys, I, I want to give our sh- sponsors a shout out. Shout out. Take it away. Are you a solo artist, band, podcaster, or anyone else who needs recording services? Well, we got a place for you where your vision can become a reality. Welcome to Small Pond Studios, built by hand with heart and sweat equity by musicians for musicians. Go to smallpondstudios.io to reach out to get more information. And make sure you let them know that Brute sent you. Hey, Sound Guy Ryan here. Didn't know if you heard, but we're a part of the Hopped Up Network. There you'll find other informative podcasts about beer. So go ahead, follow them on social media, and visit them on their website, hoppedupnetwork.com, to learn more about the people, beer, and breweries from around the country. And until next time, thanks for listening. Cheers.
All right. So, um, always curious, you know, you've been brewing for so many years yeah. now. Um, do you have any kind of specific style that you still love to brew? Is it all just kind of mundane at this point? Or, um, you know, how do you keep that passion alive? You know, I, I picked on the hazies a little bit and, <laughs> and I'll leave it there. But, uh, you know, I, I'm actually going back to some old school stuff. I'm enjoying oh, awesome. the Czech pills right now. You know, oh, yes. um, we're seeing a big resurgence band. around here. This, of that yeah. yeah. Oh, so good. Uh, and then there, we, we have a Goza series that we, we change fruits up on. Very and, cool. uh, you know, it's, it's been to recreate the Goza in a non-traditional way because we're kettle souring. Mm. It was right. a challenge and it was a fun challenge. Um, yeah. you know, no, I, I still, I still walk into to the grocery store and smell things and and, and taste things at, at different things to give me ideas. It's 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 funny where you get ideas sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Would you say food is probably where you get most of your ideas from? Oh yeah, I'm a foodie. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah. Um, obviously, with the pandemic, um, has that offered you more opportunity to kind of elaborate on some recipes, pipe dream recipes that you've had, or have you kind of had to stick to some, some core brands for you guys? Yeah, we, we, we pulled back a little bit um, to, to a point, but we have also introduced two brands last year, early this year, feels like last year already. <laughs> right. right. Um, yeah. uh, that, that have taken off and we did a, we did a double dry hop uh, IPA that uh, the numbers are coming up really nicely. Uh, of course, IPAs are, an easy thought, I guess, if you want to go that way of, of a brand to grab or yeah. a style to grab. Um, we've also got Blood Orange IP that's doing fairly well this year, too, that we haven't done. Yeah. So we've had some good success this year, style wise. Yeah. Um, being a, a 20 barrel system, uh, obviously, you mentioned a check. Uh, Pilsner, uh, do you guys have any logger sort of program? I know the tank space is kind of just, <laughs> you know, it's hard to maintain a loggering system. Absolutely not. <laughs> we've done a, we've done a couple loggers. We Two. did a yeah. right. Two nice. One was a collaboration, so there's that. Yep, <laughs> but, yep. Yeah, it was. They were uh, both I, real good, but when when setting up the system or, or designing the system, you know, we I did not design it for a loggering system at all. Yeah. Um, you know, we we were set up to turn and burn, and you know, let's just let's rock. Uh, in the last few years, as things slowed down between more breweries and now the pandemic it's like oh, let's try a couple pilsners <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 absolutely. that's awesome um so you mentioned three years ago you started the the restaurant um david that seems like kind of your forte did you work in the restaurant industry at all or are you a chef like what, what's the what's the uh the, the love of, or is this you know that's the the, the straw you picked <laughs> yeah, I, I knew that when well, originally we did food trucks for the first uh, like six years that we were open, we had a, a booming food truck culture here. And so we'd have actually nine shifts over the course of the week. Uh, we'd have usually six or seven different operators. So the menu would be different every day. Wow. Staff loved it. Guests loved it. Food truck operators loved it. And we sold lots of beer and it was really easy, right? Like just pouring beer is fairly straightforward and easy. Uh, we added food three years ago, almost to the day now, because the food truck thing uh, really wound down fairly quickly here. And we saw the impact that it was having on our guests. And you have to have something. Yeah, so we were family friendly. We were already categorized a restaurant. And, and we had a space that we called our catering room, which when we did the initial construction back in 2000. Uh, early 2011, we set aside as our catering room and with the idea that someday maybe it would be a kitchen. Uh, I was not excited about that because I kind of grew up <laughs> in kitchens and I knew as soon as it happened, like I would be chained to that damn thing. Oh. And, uh, and I have been. The I mean, prophecy the was fulfilled. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, right. Since uh, July 5th, 2018, not that I know the date exactly, but um I've been in there about 60 hours a week. I do all the ordering, uh, all the menus. Uh, John is my pit master. We smoke our own pork and beef and chicken wings. Yes. Uh, and he, uh, <laughs> yes. he does an amazing job on that. And I just, I don't, wouldn't have the additional time to do that as well. So he puts it on early when they're here brewing and I get to put it on, or I get to take it off late when 
when it's ready, you know, and that's that's like the best part because then the whole place smells awesome and oh, get imagine. a snitch a bite to make sure, you know, quality control. So, uh, but yeah, so I ended up in there and uh, it's become a, I mean, it's definitely, I, I strive to have a product that's as good as the beers that we produce. Uh, John has <laughs> set the bar particularly high. Oh, I'm getting thirsty <laughs> when she comes back. back your way. Kayla. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Another Pilsner, please. Uh, <laughs> but uh, and it and I mean, <laughs> oh, the speaking there. of the devil, did she bring a Pilsner? Oh, Thank you, <laughs> love you, Kayla. <laughs> that was so appropriate. I can't believe Perfect. that happened. That's great. She she grew up here. Uh, she started coming in when she was fifteen. Oh wow! Uh, her Talk dad would come in and drink Jeez. beer, and she would come in and drink our root beer, and eat. The, they would eat the food trucks. And when she turned 21, about three years ago, she came to work for us uh, in the front of the house as a server. And I mean, she's like our daughter, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. we've known her since she was a wee young lass. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. perfect you. example of our people. I was about to say, that's, that's amazing. That's a Speaking testament to what you guys, and what you guys yeah. are doing there. Yeah. Yeah. For yeah. sure. It's about family. We both have family. We both, you know, like, and part of the reason we decided we had to designate ourselves as a restaurant, even before we had food was, it was really important to me and to John that our kids could come and see what we do. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, and, and, and I think we've kind of, that's like, that's, it's just who we are. Like when we were doing the, we did a lot of the original construction ourselves. We hired a general contractor, but we worked on the team. John probably saved us a quarter of a million dollars just with his expertise in engineering, like legitimately. Um, and every contractor that we worked with learned something from John and he does it in a way that, it was kind and they like, they, they like started calling him the professor because every time, like, because it's just John, you know? So anyway, um, but when we did the original in the front of the house, we put in um, the air, the duct work for the heating and air conditioning and it's all chrome and it's all beautiful. And um, at that time, my oldest was seven. He's getting ready to graduate high school here in the spring, but, and he walked in and he was like, dad, the tubes are amazing. You know, and I was just like, <laughs> That's why you guys have to be able to come in here, right? Because we're just trying to gut it out and do the, get this project. And sometimes we forget, like, what's really amazing that's going on around us or what are, like, that the vision right. is happening. And it's just like we're working in the business and on the business, and we don't have time to, like, and our, our kids come in and go, wow, that's really freaking cool, Dad. You that know, and it's it, like. You need it those moments, moments right? Yeah, it makes it all work. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, one one thing I'll throw in there that uh, here in Indiana we have some awesome laws. Uh, <laughs> so if without food, without food, the kids will we would 21, 21 and older. Right. Um, oh, we have to have that they're not allowed at the bar at all. Right. There has to be a barrier. Uh, I mean, our barrier is so stupid. It's it's two inch piece of uh, piping. So so we have more kids swinging on the pipes that scares me <laughs> than yeah, if they were right. standing at the bar right. to their parent, you know. <laughs> so, anyway, had to throw that in there. That, that, and that's the reason why we, we wanted to make sure the kids could come yeah. in here, was get around some of these laws. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned the laws. I think in Massachusetts, we're very fortunate. We have an excellent Brewers Guild that, that fights for legislation in Massachusetts to make silly rules like that non-existent and make, and make rules that are beneficial to the brewing industry. Um, now there are some brewers who are going to be listening to that and who'll roll their eyes, yeah, well, <laughs> or, no, but, um, you know, I think, the, I think the, than it used to be, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's better than it used to be. be. Exactly. Yeah. Um, what is the, the Brewers Guild like in Indiana? Is there, is there, is such one? Is, is there? <laughs> they chuckle. Um, okay. Yeah. So good. <laughs> so, uh, I'll start with that. I, I was on the board for three years, four years. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember. Educational now. director. Yeah. Educational so yeah, director. I was in I was in charge of, of education. Yeah, professor. Um, and and we we we've, we've made some big strides. We we you now have my guild hat on. Of course, we uh, we we we've, we've done some good things. We got some good lobbyists going on. Uh, we finally got Sunday sales uh, at the brewery. Ooh. Wow! Holy cow! Two thousand ten. Oh, jeez! Wow! And then we got and then not the guild itself, but then they finally passed Sunday sales in the liquor stores last year. Oh, that's crazy. We, Last right. state in the union, by the way. Yeah, yeah. no kidding. Well, congrats. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> at, least we don't have a, at least we don't have a 3-2 law. So. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, but when the pandemic hit, you know, obviously the guild makes their money off of festivals. Um, right. They, they've 
basically just unloaded all their employees, three of them, and oh, haven't heard anything. And I'm not, and I'm not on the board anymore, so I'm not getting the inside. Right. So it's, it's frustrating right at the moment with our guild, but yeah, in, 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 you know, long term wise, if they've done a good job and, and been moving us forward for yeah, sure. Yeah. I know our guild's the same way. I mean, they run on events and festivals. I mean, they are still active, but certainly have taken a step back. I mean, it's tough mm-hmm. right now. They're not making. I think. I think a money. lot of the members of our brewers guild are fortunate enough to work in in the bigger breweries that aren't your, you know, small barrel systems. So right. Right. They can kind of focus on the guild's activities while their breweries are ran by. Other people. Other people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, yeah. You know, it's a, yeah, we, it's, we don't, our, our biggest brewery is 30 barrels, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sun, yeah. Is that Sun King? No. Sun King. Three Floyds. Well, oh, they're, 50, they're 50, aren't they? Yeah. Three Floyds. Wow. I think yeah. they're the biggest. Yeah. But wow. that may be in the past now. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Seriously. According to yeah. the text I just got, that article from Northwest Indiana was accurate. So they're not, they're closing their, Brew pub and their distillery, which they just spent Boot five million dollars to build that distrib- d- distillery. Ugh, Brutal. terrible. Three years ago. Yeah. So, Oof. are you guys in distribution throughout the state, or is it just uh, cans to go at the um, at the brewery? <laughs> we we know we've had our up, ups and downs with the growth of the industry and, and competition. So we were uh, we had at one point gone to Ohio and Illinois, yeah, uh, and all of Indiana, and we got frustrated with uh with the freshness of our beer and the control of our beer outside the state so we ended up sure. pulling it back yeah, into, and keeping it in indiana yeah um we're we're almost back to border all, all of indiana now we, we we did a distribution change last year which was another challenge we had um it's another fun law with with indiana's uh, the distributor owns your brand once they sell it yep so the, to, to get it out of there is a pain in the ass we have something similar yeah, here in yeah, we just actually fixed that law in Massachusetts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. major pain. Yep. It could be fixed here. That'd be cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're uh, yeah, we're all Indiana. Good. Yeah, that's Good. awesome. Yeah, yeah. So I want to get to know what you guys are drinking at home. So is there a particular style of beer that you're drinking at home? You drinking what's your own stuff? in your fridge? Yeah, what's in your fridge? <laughs> hmm. You know, I, I'm on a Pilsner kick lately, so I've got Bit Burgers and Kronbacher. Nice. Um, you know, and I've, I've always have sours on, you know, random sours. Cool. 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 David, what about yourself? So 90% of my beer right now is probably Triton beer. Yeah. So it's probably six or seven different brands, uh, including a couple barrel aged beers. Nice. I, it's, it's, it's hard to drink a beer that's that big for me. I, I by myself so uh, yeah, you it's still you know, crack those open yeah. every night and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right so until we're, the pandemic's done and we can actually share beers again like some of those beers aren't going to get cracked open anytime I soon know. But, i know my my cellar is growing and i have right? no one to drink it with so it's yeah. tough i can understand <laughs> yeah. but i i you know i'm all kind of all over the place right you'll probably find a celebration uh ale from sierra nevada in oh, my yep. fridge right now nice. yep. There's nice. probably a founder's breakfast out in there. Ooh, there I know that there's one. a Great Lakes Brewing Company porter in there right now. Nice. There's a couple of, uh, I've got a couple of uh, Ohio beers that uh, I brought back from Cincinnati the last trip. Um, there's, I, like like you said before, there's some great breweries uh, in the Cincinnati area and in, in Ohio. Oh, yeah, in for general. sure. Yeah, uh, I think uh, that a, Bone and Blade Brewery in, in uh, Columbus is like... One of the big, one of the more notable. I think ones, of like right? Brew Kettle and Jackie O's yeah. and and yeah. Great Lake. They're a classic, but like Ryan Geist in Cincinnati, yeah. phenomenal. Like there's there's so many good operators over there too. Like their Elevator Brewing Company. I think they just got bought by somebody, but they're out of Columbus. And like the scuttlebutt on those guys has been nothing but amazing. So um, I loved it try their beer actually it's not available in indiana or i would have by now (laughs) and i didn't find it on my last uh, beer safari to cincinnati so uh but i'll keep my eyes peeled for that but i i you know i I, i'm i originally i grew up probably in sierra nevada and stone were the two that and and i in in a past life i was part owner of an irish pub in south carolina at a time when we had 32 crafts on draft and they were the only 32 crafts you could get in South Carolina. I mean, you know, and like McEwen's Scotch or McEwen's IPA. It's like the first IPA I drank was, which 
which I thought was phenomenal. And then I drank like a good IPA and was like, holy <laughs> crap, you know, oh, like, <laughs> yeah. this is flavor town. Yo, all right. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I, I, I like to, to pick up, uh, it's important too. It's important to drink other people's beers. And every time I go out, I have a rule. Like I, I, I tend to, to frequent places that have our beer, but, and the first, the rule is that the first one I drink has to be mine, right? Like, I want to know how that dead iced out or the rail splitter or whatever it is. Tried to order a blood orange the other night. They were gone. It was gone. Oh, heartbreaking. What do you have? All right, I'll do the other one. But then the next beer is someone else's because you really have to keep up with what, what I wouldn't say the competition, but in a lot of cases, what our friends are doing. Right, so right. Uh, if I can grab a pail from, um, you know, Black Acre, or I can I try something from Metazoa Brewing Company or, or uh, Sun King's latest seasonal, like, I want to try those things also because when I bump into those guys, I want to be able to say like, hey, man, I had that beer and it was seriously legit, you know, so. Right. And if yeah. it wasn't legit, I just won't mention that I had it probably. So. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, do you have a guilty pleasure beer? <laughs> All right. Yep. All right. And, yep. and I would admit to this in public because I've mentioned it to, just recently to some of our regulars. So Bush Light Draft in a can. Really, oh. Ryan, which is, sound guy which Ryan is, is like he is all his fist. about that. <laughs> so I draft in a can, yeah. and I'll tell you why. Like, I used to get it in thirty packs, like Stroh's, but it was like yes. light, years, <laughs> light years better than Stroh's. And then, like, they did a um, a national blind taste test of like thirty two um, big domestic uh, light loggers, and that one was like in the top three every time. And it's wow. like legitimately, if you didn't. And it has to come out of the can because it's different. I've had it in the bottle. I've had it. I actually don't like it as well on draft as I like it in the can. But okay, pour the okay. beer, hide the can, serve it to your craft buddies. They'll be like, wow, this is really good. What local craft brewery <laughs> did this come from? <laughs> nice. Love this guy. We need to keep him around. <laughs> Seriously. I'm going to say for me. So. You're going to say what? Oh, hams. Oh, yeah, yeah. All their beers are fully poisoned, brother. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think I'm all out of questions for this evening. Ryan, do you this have anything wonderful. or Erica? Uh, I just have my uh, my question I like to ask for the both of you is what do you want to learn more about in brewing or owning a business? Wow. <laughs> Finance. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the pandemic's forcing that a little bit. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, we built our company on 100% private capital. Uh, we raised a million dollars Wow! during the prior worst economy uh, in 2000, the fallout of 2008. Uh, we managed to find a uh, million dollars worth of private capital for people that believed in us and wanted to see our dream become a reality. Wow. Um, and it has. And uh, we, for a lot of years, we made fairly large quantities of beer based on the model that we built and the system worked like it should. And then as the market got more crowded and the distributor got less motivated, uh, those quantities went down and those kind of days where we could fund things from our um, cash flow uh, went away quickly. Mm -hmm. So um, finding right now, I mean, besides running the kitchen more efficiently and those other things, <laughs> um, we found some local bankers who have a vested interest in us because they moved to the neighborhood because they love Triton Brewing Company. We have uh, some other uh, commonalities, like we all graduated from the same college and we're kind of like a mafia on a certain <laughs> level. Uh, but he came to us and said, you know, what can we do? And we said, you can help be a roadmap to the next iteration of Triton Brewing Company, basically. Like, you, you basically have to reinvent yourself on an annual basis on a lot, in a lot of ways in this business. Um, every year your beer list is, you know, what you produce is different. Uh, the, what you support is different. The charities that you do can be different. Um, the way you look, we're changing. Um, and basically having access to like legitimate banking, uh, 
in a lot of ways will help us reach the goal of being, uh, I, I'd love to see this company last 100 years. I won't, but I'd like <laughs> to see the company last that long. <laughs> I'm okay with that. I'm just, I'm just saying right now, like, I don't want to last 100 years. <laughs> My shit's getting old already. I'm just right, saying. Right, so. right, right. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Unless it's a head on a like a robot body, I, I might be down for that, you know. But... <laughs> bre brewing wise, I'm always interested in, in trying stuff that I haven't tried before, you know, um, like a hazy beer. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Just shake the keg before you pour it; it'll be fine. You know. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it, you know, it, it's funny you say that. You know. It, trying to get the beer hazy right it seems like you need to do some master classes out in new england or something right right, right. <laughs> right. Well, it's like it's not finished what are they doing this is terrible yeah well you know like we've talked to a lot of people and people have always said that you know the the haze was never really the the goal you know it, it was always like the byproduct and now for some reason people just want it to be the goal yeah they it, say the haze pays the ha i say the haze <laughs> pays that's what i always say the haze pays yeah. well and the best yeah, part is john we've actually created a style right the juicy yeah. ipa style because john can duplicate those flavors all day long all day long but the haze like you know you you store a beer at 36 degrees for three days and everything drops out of it. I mean, right, that's like, right. uh, that's if it, if it's a well-made beer, that's what's going to happen. But so, and I think about those beer, you know, like the original, was it um, the original hazy that I can't think what it's called right now, but it was meant to be drunk from the can. And the question I always had was, does it actually taste better from the can? Or do you notice then less that it's hazy? You know what I'm saying? Like, right. Right. Oh, the can because otherwise you're gonna be like oh, i don't want to put that in my mouth oh, no. hmm. <laughs> it's not finished yet yeah absolutely what, what, i'm gonna throw one thing in there that that uh one thing the haze craze has taught me is that i don't need to use a lot of findings anymore I, i'm reducing some of the stuff that i put into the beer to help clarify because i actually i think it's our water our chemistry of our water is, is actually clarifying our beer for us huh. yeah that wouldn't surprise nice. me yeah it wouldn't yeah. surprise me either yeah. Um, so I want our listeners, if they make it out to, uh, Indiana, uh, post pandemic right, or, um, any local people in the Indiana craft uh, scene that haven't made their way to, to Triton Brewing Company, uh, where are you guys located, um, physically and on, uh, the interweb? So you can find us at tritonbrewing.com. Uh, and we update that regularly. You can also find us on Instagram, uh, Facebook and Twitter. We used to do Pinterest and some of the other stuff that just, just that doesn't, but those others, other media we post on daily. Uh, so I do 99% of that approximately. <laughs> um, uh, you can find us on the east side of Indianapolis, the neighborhoods called Lawrence or Fort Ben. Uh, it is an old military fort circa 1903, 04. Uh, they actually shut it down in 1991. Um, but at one time it was the third largest military base in the U S army. So, wow. um, cool, cool place. Really like very progressive. And I don't mean that in like, you know, a conservative and liberal <laughs> sort of way. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, it's a great neighborhood. It's uh, really family oriented. They're, uh, very forward thinking. There's a lot of tech, uh, out here actually. And we're right across the street from the big community college, which is fairly cool too. So definitely. But, uh, yeah, and uh, we, you can find us in all the big local retailers, too, at your finer liquor and uh, grocery stores, for mm, sure. Cool. So, awesome. Yeah. And to the Brewroots uh, crew, if y'all make it out here, y'all's not particularly a Hoosier thing to say, but I lived in the <laughs> South for a few years. And it's non-gender specific, so it's actually safe in a lot of ways. Exactly. But, uh, we didn't, I know we didn't, uh, you know, you guys haven't. Uh, been out to taste anything and and but if you make it to indianapolis uh your first round's on us and and you know what your dinner's on us too so come visit Noted. and we're family friendly so you can if you have kids you can tow them with you it'll be fine we'll yeah. give them root beer we'll floats. bring the whole gang we'll make send a trip them home all sugared up let's <laughs> go let's do it that sounds awesome love it love it well we always end the podcast with erica's favorite question the last question here what are you most proud of? I'm most proud of my kids. 
you want to talk about the world. There you go. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. My family and my kids, for sure. And then I'm, it's, it, I, I don't get, actually, I don't, I don't draw much pride out of building a, I guess, what would be considered a successful business, right? <laughs> it seems like an inevitability on a certain level because I didn't ever think we could fail. Yeah. Right, right. And I don't know that I've ever, like, kind of rolled in it and been like, woohoo, we did it, you know? Because like, <laughs> we went right from building it to working in it. And it, I mean, That's that was the way. goal. That was always the goal. That was yeah. always the goal. Yeah. And I didn't romanticize it because I worked in kitchens before, right? Like, yeah. I know how hard this business is. It's, right. It's blood, uh, sweat, and tears for sure. You know what I think I'm, besides my family and, like, the, the amazing young people that I get to work <laughs> with regularly as, you know, and my Boy Scout stuff, like, I guess I'm really proud that in a lot of ways John and I have created a business that, when we go to, to the educational seminars that are put on by the guild, for instance, it's like I look at all the young brewers and they're they're kind of gathered around John and they're like, Brewer John, tell us a story. You know, I mean, that's <laughs> not it's not exactly like that, but it's like pretty they much that te- they have a technical <laughs> question that they have a question about or they have a beer that they have an issue with or he regularly gets calls from other brewers. Yeah. And like, why is it that when I open the bottle, it all comes out? <laughs> you know, it's right. like. Did you turn it upside down and pour it out? No, it did it on its own. It's like, you know, like maybe you should bring a sample that over and we should look at it under a microscope. You know, like, mm. I, I mean, I, I think I'm proud cool. that we've only not only built a business, but we like we've I, I guess we've gained some of the knowledge that helps other businesses and helps other brewers like kind of raise the bar with what they do. And that's like kind of next level right you're not only doing it but you're teaching it and that seems like that's, that's pretty cool fairly special, that's huge yeah. yeah that's so, huge yeah absolutely plus we love everybody i'm only an hey. asshole to people that deserve to be assholes too i'm just saying <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sorry john sometimes you have to be an asshole man <laughs> i know awesome. you have to have a gatekeeper <laughs> awesome. well thank you guys for doing this i can't wait to hear what's next for you guys um and I personally cannot wait to make my way out to. I can't to wait Indy to check to... out your scene. Yeah, and have yeah. your beer. I'm pretty excited. Yeah, yeah. we'll Come definitely. See us. We definitely and we'll will. Call all our friends and tell them that you're coming yes. over too. So we'll, <laughs> we'll send you to the other cool places that you should see while you're Perfect. here. Perfect. So. Sounds cool. All right. Well, thank you again, and uh, cheers. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Cheers. All right. Well, thank you so much for listening to our episode with Triton Brewing Company. We do appreciate that David and John were able to spend some of their time and do this with us. Um, It's always cool learning about a brewery in another state and kind of learning, you know, their laws and what they're doing. So we hope that you enjoyed it because I know we certainly did. Um, We want to ask our listeners who are amazing to go out there and rate and subscribe to our podcast if you already aren't doing so. And if you aren't following us on any of our social media, I don't know why you're not. Just go. It's easy. At Brewer, it's on everything. Do it. Do it. Uh, we also have a Patreon. That's Brew Roots Podcast. Uh, please subscribe to that. You can get some cool brewery swag. And you'll be helping us out at the same time. That's right. Well, we have some awesome episodes lined up for you in the upcoming weeks. And we're going to tease that on our social media. So if you want to find out about it, follow us. So until next week. Cheers. Cheers. cheers.